Ne <laughs> Nottingham Express Transit. Not really the most inventive name, is it? But alas, Nottingham has got trans, so let's learn about them. Nottingham, like all urban centres of the UK, had old trams, a decent network size, they worked well, but got ripped up during the interwar period in 1936 and replaced by motor buses. The creation of NET. The city had always had issues with congestion and transit, and therefore in the late 1980s the council authorities began to formulate ideas for a mass transit system in and around Nottingham. Then, in 1998, the government announced that £167 million would be made available for a Nottingham Transit solution. Two years later, the local authorities had come to a 20-year private finance initiative concession to Arrow Light Rail Limited, which was a consortium of a number of companies who would oversee the design, funding, building, operation and maintenance of the system for 20 years. The first phase of the project was built between 2000 until 2004, and overall cost £200 million at the time. The route ran from the city centre terminus at the Nottingham train station to Hucknall with a small branch to Phoenix Park. The line was instrumental in reintroducing the residents and making them return to transit solutions, and an 8% increase in overall public transit in the region followed after the opening. In nearly all fields, the line had beaten expectation, and so when plans for more lines across and around Nottingham were created, it made sense to continue the growth of the network. The second phase of the network was already being planned before the original line had even opened, and it proposed that new lines should be constructed between the city centre, Toton Lane and Clifton, and after many years in governmental bureaucracy, the initiative was given the go-ahead in 2009, and construction work on the project began in 2012, with the Tramlink Nottingham Limited consortium companies being awarded the winning bid, who oversaw the construction of the lines. The lines then opened late, after the delays, with the construction in 2015. Rolling stock of NET The NET currently hosts two trams on its network, the older and legacy fleet of Bombardier in Centro 86s and 5s, and the newer Alstom Citadis 302s that were introduced around the eve of the Phase 2 lines. There are currently 15 Incentos that operate on the network, and 22 Citadis 302s, which unlike other tram operators, don't have their fleet numbers to note versions and phases of the network. Passenger Journeys on NET the passenger usage of the NET, even while having a smaller population of Sheffield, outcomes repeats them by a wide margin. Over the last five years, the passenger journeys made per year have never decreased under 10 million, and that's with a population that's around 200,000 smaller than Sheffield, though trying to find an estimate of how many people the line serves was basically impossible, so this might be kind of wrong, but it's still pretty cool. The future of the NET There has been speculation about the future of the NET network, with suggestions that the network would be extended further from Clifton Park and Toton Lane, the former to the planned HS2 station, dubbed the East Midland Subs, or a possible new line entirely to Gelding, to the east of the city centre, though it's been highlighted that without central government support for the schemes, they wouldn't get off the ground, and that building out the network is more of a political issue than a technical one. Yet the success of the network, when compared to similar systems, shows promise, so it's likely the network will eventually be expanded in one of these modes, and it is almost certain that if the HS2 station is built, that the Toton Tramway would be extended to the new station. Y you can even see it in the station's 3D previs. While not as technically marvellous as other networks, the NET shows us that most urban centres can succeed with good planning and implementation of trams but again proves that often the inception of such a system is a long and drawn out one, that nearly always requires central government support to get off the ground. Though it's insightful to look at all these other metro systems and think about the possibilities in other urban centres like Leeds or Liverpool. Thanks for watching and have a good day.